Yes, Dr. Ibrahim. Ibrahim, please, 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 one is the transition from millennium development goals to uh, sustainable development goals. That is another uh, very important process that the world is uh, undergoing through. And I have been also asked to uh, speak on the history of climate negotiations and what has happened from, say, Copenhagen to Lima. So I take you through a small digression towards the SDGs first, and I believe that since Climate is the thing that more people, more uh, most of us are familiar, more familiar with. I'll come to the history of climate negotiations later, so that we can have a uh, wider discussion on that later. Okay, not problem. From 2012 onwards, in 2012, uh, as most of you might be knowing, that uh, uh, the Rio Plus 20 conference was organized. The Rio Plus 20 was Rio Plus 20 conference was uh, to commemorate the Rio uh, Earth Summit that was organized in uh, 1992, and the uh, Rio Earth Summit for the first time brought the issues of sustainability and environment on the political agenda of the world. It became a political issue from an environmental issue. <coughs> After that, in 2000, uh, all of us know that MDGs were uh, declared. MDGs were a set of eight goals, mainly aimed at reducing poverty and inequality within the countries. And uh, uh, that time, it was it was understood that countries are poor and countries lack sustainability because they are poor, and rich countries have to support them financially. So eight set of goals were undertaken under MDGs, and these goals were supposed to be achieved by 2050. As most of us know that except for few goals, child mortality, we have little progress. We have little progress in uh, gender equality in some countries. Progress has been uneven and unequal. Besides that, lot of goals could not be fulfilled. And the analysis of that is that if you only ask poor countries to do something and rich countries to do nothing but to provide finance, the issue of sustainability is not going to be solved. And now people think that sustainability is an equally alarming question for all countries, not only poor countries. I mean, many of the countries, for, for example, India is using two times the resources it can generate naturally. China, US are in the same range. But few countries like UK uses four times of its natural resources that it, it can generate. Japan uses seven times. Few small countries like UAE uses 13, more than 13 times of its, uh, more than 13 times the resources it can generate naturally in a year. So sustainability is, is equally a question for all countries. And that is why the Rio Plus 20 meeting decided that <coughs> the Millennium Development Goals, we could not uh, achieve that very well, but we should try to formulate something which will be applicable universally by all, applicable in all countries, and that will be SDGs. So, okay. okay. So a number of efforts were, yeah, a number of <coughs> efforts were started after this 2012 uh, meeting under two categories. One are intergovernmental efforts, which were countries, countries are parties and they participate, and other set of processes were led by United Nations. In intergovernmental processes, you have a post 2015 development agenda of the United Nations, where the United Nations is looking into what should be its development agenda after the MDGs uh, end. Then you have a follow-up of Rio plus 20. Then there is a United Nations General Assembly process, which is also looking into same, same set of issues. Uh, then you have a set of UN-led uh, processes, where they are also looking into how 
we can improve the sustainability of the world. And this also includes a platform of global corporations, which is called UN Global Com Compact, and a platform to ensure sustainable energy for all. Uh, if you next slide, please. Yeah. If you look at it, I mean, uh, visually, it looks like a very, very complex maze of activities, which it really is. And if you want to follow each of them, it's it's almost uh, not impossible, but very difficult to do it. In the post-2015 development agenda, United Nations set up a high-level panel of eminent person, which included sort of 27 uh, eminent members from the world's government. They submitted a report in 2013, and they said that the when MDG co comes to an end, we should have an agenda which is universal. It's not like MDG, which will be applicable only in poor and developing countries. Uh, it should have sustainable development at the core, which they, in, in this in this form, they agreed that whatever processes we have been doing did not have sustainable development agenda at the core. We should not leave no. We should not leave anyone behind, and economies should be transformed for more jobs. We have had a decade of jobless growth and things like that, and forge new global partnership. I have spent a second on global partnership. Uh, when 2000, in 2000, MDGs were uh, declared, and 2000, there was a global consensus that rich countries should be, should provide 0.7 percent of their gross national product to poor countries, so that they can develop, they can remove poverty, they can remove inequality, they can do, they can remove diseases or contain diseases, but. In these 15 years, what we have achieved is, at best it is 0.3%. So right now, one can safely assume that rich countries are only contributing 0.3% of their GNP to poor countries. And the mandate was to provide 07 So this is the progress on the global cooperation and global partnership for sustainability. Uh, there are other processes which are more important than the earlier I, I, I mentioned. There has been a open working group. There has been an open working group which has been set up by United Nations to formulate sustainable development goals. It started its work in uh, January 2013. Besides that, the United Nations has also set up a high-level political forum. High-level political forum is supposed to replace the United Nations Commission on Sustainable Development, which organized the uh, Earth Summit, etc. earlier. They found that it's not very effective. And to enhance the global political ambition, we should have a high-level political forum. So there is a there is a high level political forum set up which will be home to sustainable development goals and the, this will be mainly monitoring the progress and implementation of sustainable development goals. There is also a technology expert group on sustainable development. There have been initiatives by uh, President of the General Assembly also to look at sustainability issues. I will skip this. <coughs> I will also skip this. So, the open working group started in January 2013 to look at sustainable development goals and formulate sustainable development goals. It's basically a 30 member committee where more than 17 countries. Next, please. Next, please. Next. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm not at this ends me. Yeah. So it's a 30 member working group where more than 70 countries are represented. They are represented in Troikas, in yeah, India, Pakistan and some other countries together. So any of them represents this group. Uh, first eight input sessions were organized which were followed by outcome sessions and final draft was presented 
on 19 July 2014. The final draft has 17 goals and 179 targets. 169. Sorry, 169 targets. People thought, and also the United Nations thinks it's it's a bit too many. It's not manageable. Nobody is going to remember 17 target, 17 goals and 169 targets. So let's simplify this. The United Nations idea of having sustainable development goals <coughs> is a set of goals that can be captured on a poster, single poster, or a set of goals that can be tweeted. So it can be made more popular. The United Nations feel whatever success MDGs had, that was mainly because of the fact that it was so simple that it could be put on a small poster and everybody could remember it. But the problem is that <coughs> simplification, this kind of simplification might have a reductionist effect on what we are trying to achieve. What is the crisis Swamedha has already mentioned? And this is the crisis that we are looking at. And this kind of crisis cannot be solved by little tinkering. Yeah, next slide please. Yeah, so 17 goals include goals on end poverty, goals on ensure healthy lives, goals on uh, end hunger, achieve gender equality, ensure access to affordable, reliable, uh, modern energy services, promote sustained inclusive, sustainable economic growth, build resilient infrastructure, next slide please. Uh, make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable, ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns, take urgent action to combat climate change, of course. Combat climate change was the most discussed aspect through the entire uh, 13 sessions. And uh, here, Climate change has been acknowledged as a crisis, but in terms of solution, they have said that no, we don't need to prejudge what UNFCCC conferences decide. So we will depend on whatever UNFCCC conference will decide, and here we'll also see what we have been seeing what UNFCCC conferences are deciding, whether they are at all moving towards the solutions. Uh, protect, restore, and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, promote peaceful and inclusive society. The goal 17, which you can't see here, is on means of implementation, MOI. Uh, in the first session that was held, the countries did not feel it important to have a goal on means of implementation. They said that we don't need a separate goal on means of implementation, but, but after a lot of fight, means of implementation was included as 17th goal and specific <clears throat> aspects of means, finance, technology, trade were also included in specific goals wherever it was fine, relevant and pertinent. Can we have the next slide please go? Uh, the main areas of conflict is that again, here also it's it's complete echo of the debate that we hear in UNFCCC. Uh, Rich countries say that now only rich countries and industrialized countries cannot take the entire financial and burden of providing technology. So developing countries, emerging economies, major developing countries also will have to share the burden. And their idea of sustainable development goals is that all goals should be implemented in all countries. While the developing countries have been saying that universality does not mean uniformity. And though we agree to implement goals, but in a manner which takes into account our national circumstances and concentrations. So they, they want to retain the right to deviate from the sustainable development goals. Uh, climate change has been an important issue of debate and uh, Countries have debated whether we should talk about climate change here, or since the UNFCCC is a uh, is a is a more authoritative platform to discuss and decide about how are we going to, to, to solve climate change. Let's wait for the UNFCCC decision. 
lot of developing countries and Islamic countries and countries including India had a lot of objection on sexual and health and reproductive rights. Uh, yeah, and uh, as I said earlier, a lot of discussion on whether we should have means of implementation in each goal or whether we, sh we should have a standalone goal on means of the implementation. These have been the basic uh, fights that we have been hearing following these discussions. Uh, next slide, please, Yeah, next slide, please. I yeah. <coughs> so, the main outcome till now in sustainable development goals and its debate is the 17 goals that we saw. Now, what is the general perception globally? The global general perception is the kind of paradigm shift that we, that we need now. The sustainable development goals framework do not aim to provide that kind of sus uh, paradigm shift. It's very unambitious. If you talk about poverty, the, the poverty line has been defined as $1.00. Uh, per day. This was supposed to be poverty line 15 years back. So in terms of poverty line, it's not very ambitious. In terms of inequality, it talks a lot about removing inequalities within the societies and countries, but it does not talk about removing inequality among the countries and between the countries. And if you don't address inequality between the countries and among the countries, I mean, it's 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 very difficult to ensure equity and re reallocation of resources what is required. Uh, <coughs> one area where rich countries would have had very important role was uh, sustainable consumption and production. They could have had very ambitious uh, uh, undertakings in that, but they failed to do it. So there is very inappropriate focus on uh, sustainable consumption and production. Uh, the food and hunger part also talks about the same design framework that we have been following. Sustainable intensification of food. Uh, there is no talk about addressing biodiversity losses. There is no emphasis on agroecological agriculture that we have been talking about. and. Generally, people feel that we have missed an opportunity to bring in the core the sustainability debate. Next slide, please. Yeah, this December, while we were at UNFCCC COP, our United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki Moon, also brought out a synthesis report. Synthesis report is supposed to be a synthesis of the draft report that contains 17 goals and 169 targets. <clears throat> I mean, as I said earlier, UN thinks that 17 goals and 169 targets are little too many. So let's simplify this. So the Secretary General has come up with six set of basically values which, which he, he feels that in, will incorporate all the goals and targets. And these six essential elements that he talks about is dignity, people, prosperity, planet, justice, and partnership. I mean, rather than solving the confusion that was earlier there, it has increased the confusion. And now people are saying that we don't understand that whether the follow-up negotiations, I mean, negotiations are uh, scheduled to take place from 19 January each month till July there will be a session and in September United Nations General Assembly session uh, UN is supposed to bring out the final sustainable development goals. So now people are saying that we don't understand that, that whether the negotiations will take place on the draft which was agreed among the countries and brought out through a through a earlier process which 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 was led by countries or the negotiation will take place on this uh, synthesis report that the Secretary General has brought out. <coughs> but thankfully, UN has clarified that we don't intend to 
replace the draft report that was there earlier and states have a right to negotiate on the draft that they brought out. This is now supposed to be only a communication tool <coughs> to bring something about SDGs on one poster and to be tweetable. That is it. So that is where we are. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah. <coughs> so what we expect now from developing countries that they have argued very strongly in favor of equality, in favor of removing poverty, in favor of uh, sustainable consumption and production, they should hold their foot on those grounds. But at the same time, they also need to be more accepting on issues like climate change, on issues like sexual health and reproductive rights, etc. It was supposed that countries will after discuss these draft report nationally and come up with a sort of national consensus on what they will negotiate in the United Nations General Assembly. But uh, I don't see many countries conducting these kind of consultations. Uh, UNDP organized few consultations in Delhi, in India rather, but uh, in none of the consultations there was any representation from the government. So, this is a very small reflection of how the government thinks that uh, taking, uh, say, say, opinion of civil society or experts or academia is whether it's it's important or whether it is a, at all important. Yeah. So, in terms of sustainable development goals, next. Negotiations will start on January 19. It will happen every month for four days. And uh, it will go on till July. And September, we are expecting a, a final sustainable development goals. Though there is very little opportunity for NGOs now to enter into this process. The process that was held uh, last, last year and year before last, there was very uh, adequate space for NGOs in, in that terms and it was good to see that chair of the working groups also took inputs from NGOs and incorporated those inputs especially on on, on sexual and uh, reproductive rights etc, human rights etc. Despite 